actually. Let it, let's just make sure I am on my Wi-Fi. Oh, good. Up. Oh. Yay! I can see it, and it's working. <laughs> um, let let me know if you guys can hear me okay. See me. Um, well, I guess I see myself, but it looks like we are working. So, hi everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with part four of my live spin along. We've plied two different, or not plied, we spun singles of two different yarns, and today we are going to ply them together. The first yarn, or the first singles that we spun, this is the first one that we spun. This was some Knit Picks Full Circle Roving in Color Pigeon that I um, dip dyed some roving that I had put in a crochet chain. So I got some really cool Wilton's Violet breaking on it and the video is on the channel. Um, and then in part three, we finished up the single of where we did some speckled roving using Wilton's Violet and you could really, really see the color separate. Good morning! Um, and it was kind of cool how um, you could really see these little dots of red and then the blue spread out a lot further. So that was a lot of fun. And both of these, um, the WPI, the wraps per inch of both of these singles is between around like 14 to 17, which puts them in a DK or sport weight range. And so not quite as thin as I was hoping, but given that I've been going for bulkier spins lately, um, I think that, you know, it's pretty good. And so now, yeah, I guess now we're ready to start plying. Fairy tale look. Ooh, I like that. Um, so let's swap. All right. So this, as we now know, is my Kromsky Fantasia. And let me... Okay, I can't get that any lower. Um, so it has a built-in lazy cape. Um, I guess that's probably what you would call it, which is one of the best features. It's got these removable um, metal pegs that I can add my bobbins directly onto as I almost knocked one onto the floor. So that way it can spin around as I ply the yarn. And so I actually have, which I've never used, another one so that way I could do, well, I actually, I guess between this wheel and the separate Lazy Kate I have, I could probably do a five ply, but that right now I'm like, that's too many. <laughs> um, I, for three ply, I've done something called end plying or chain plying, where I'll start with one strand and it's almost like a really long crochet loops, like really huge stitches. And so you kind of chain it as you're spinning. Um, but that's not what I'm doing today. I'm going to do a more conventional two ply yarn. And I am going to set up the camera a bit closer. So unfortunately, I think in order to give you a better view of um, my hands, Yep, Navajo applying or end plying. Some people call it chain plying. Um, but today I'm just gonna do a two ply yarn. And so unfortunately we aren't gonna be seeing those spindles um, very easily because I'm hoping, if I'm too close, I can always move back. Yeah, I'm hoping that you can get a better view of my hands and of the bobbin. And Hopefully, I'll be able to um, carry on through this okay. The kids are currently napping, and with any luck, they will stay, stay napping long enough for me to ply the yarn. And of course, this hook is pretty important. <laughs> and I'm always scrambling for it. Um, Hopefully the kids will stay asleep. Plying takes a lot, lot less time than spinning, and so since it took me about an hour to spin each of the singles, I'm expecting that it'll probably take less than that to ply the yarn. 
So I spun, the two singles are Z, um, which means that I spun them while spinning the wheel clockwise. Um, and so I'm gonna apply in the reverse direction. So I will be spinning the wheel counterclockwise and get an S two plot, an S direction two ply yarn. So I'm just checking the tension. Okay, that's pretty good. And unlike, since I've got a multiple ply yarn here, it's a little easier when you're going, when you're doing S because you don't have to like reverse the twist first. And, ooh, I'm all right. <laughs> Although my uh, phone charger might not be, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see. I just stepped on it and bent it. Um, hopefully that'll be okay. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so I'm gonna get the two strands. Oh, I haven't done this in a while. Hopefully, now we'll see how well I did with the spinning because we'll see if I end up with any breaks. Um, So I don't want this end part to be super twisted because I want it to kind of, so I'm just kind of laying it over and the leader will kind of twist um, into the yarn. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and knot the ends together, but I'm gonna see if I can do this a little more properly today. There we go. Yeah, so both of these singles were dyed with um, Wilton's Violet Food Coloring. And I'm gonna stop and see if you can see like these really cool twists um, that are already showing up. Why is this not, Jake, I'm working on the time lapse, but for some reason, there we go. I didn't seem to be filming. All right, and I'm using the same whorl that I used for making the singles. Really, I guess you want this, I think from what I've read that you want the, like the same number of twists in the ply as you had in the singles, but I kind of like, you know, a fluffy yarn, so I just kind of go for what feels nice. But I thought it would be fun since one of the rovings that I dyed and the way I spun it, the repeats of color will be a lot longer than the other one. So I thought that combining the two yarns would give um, it a lot, it would make any stripes a lot less harsher and give it some really fun, uh, just visual interest. I don't know what I'll make with it yet. Um, I have too many, uh, or I'll have to see how much yardage I get and what the final weight is. I have a feeling that maybe I'll be around a worsted, which would be nice because I like using worsted weight yarns. If I'm going for a really long gradient, that's when I'll do chain plying um, or Navajo plying. Or to be honest, if sometimes I start off making something that I think I want to have as a single ply yarn, and then I decide I want to ply it a little too late, um, and I hadn't div divided the fiber, so I will just uh, end ply it, and that way I get uh, a multiple ply yarn. But we're also going to see here, so the two fibers that I started with each were 100 grams um, of roving, and you know, the I got similar thickness yeah, um, for each of the singles, so that's good. But I still could have a lot more yardage in one than the other. So if that happens, uh, maybe I'll chain ply whatever is left over, um, just so that way I can show you guys what that's, what that's like. Um, but the, the dip-dyed roving, 
um, started off as like a pale gray. And the, the base for the uh, speckled roving started off as more of a bare white. So not a bleached white, but it wasn't uh, a pale gray. So that also gives some differentiation between the colors that we get in the two ply yarn. But it's pretty, I think it's pretty remarkable that all of these colors come from just one tube of food coloring. So please Wilton never change your Wilton's Violet formulation because it is my favorite. <laughs> Plying requires a lot less attention for me than than, than drafting because I'll oh, try to get my, so I only have one hand on camera. Um, oops. I do want to try to have both on. So I'll work a little closer. But I just, and again, like, you know, some people will let go and they can get the twist to travel down fine. I find that I need to slide my fingers because otherwise the twist will just concentrate in one spot and I don't always like the way that that looks. But when I'm spinning similarly colored or making a two-ply yarn, I like seeing how the colors pool. So a little bit, sec a little bit ago there was a section that was mostly blue and it always kind of amuses me when that works out. Especially, you know, well, in this case when, you know, we really had fibers that were dyed two different ways. So it's not, uh, they're not in, the colors aren't necessarily in the same pattern within the singles. Oh, this is so fun, guys. <laughs> I love hand dyed, hand spun yarn. There's just something about the colors that I don't, I mean, you can buy commercially twisted yarns and stuff. There's just something I feel like that's a little unique. And the, the fact that, you know, since when I started dyeing and experimenting with dyeing, I realized that there's a whole other level of color that I could play with. Um, by dyeing the roving and spinning it and mixing the color. And so that really excited me. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to learn how to spin because I wanted to learn how to mix up the colors. Even though dyeing roving is a little more nerve wracking because felt it's way easier, I think, to felt a bunch of roving than it is to felt an already spun yarn. But I have been really lucky and I have never ended up with a massively felted mess. And you know that if I did end up with a massively felted mess, I would still show you guys. Um, I'd keep it in the video because I try to learn from my mistakes and hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes too. So. Yeah, but I feel like I can do a lot more things while I'm plying. Like my it needs a lot less attention. And maybe when I finally let my kids play on the wheel someday, plying might be a reasonable wit place to help them start. I've never done plying on my drop spindle. Um, and maybe because since I didn't have with the drop spindle um, I didn't have any bobbins or anything for my singles to go on, so I didn't really have like a good way to do it. I could have, um, and sometimes I have done this. If you have um, a single ply yarn and you realize you want to make it two ply, you can actually, and you don't want there to be waste at the end, you can wind it into a center pull ball and then, I am not putting this on the bottom that evenly. Yep, yeah, this. Jake, exactly. You can wind it into a center pull ball, center pull ball, 
and then from the middle and from the outside you take an edge of each and then you can ply the yarn using the two ends of your center, center pull ball. And so that's a way that you can get a two ply yarn without then having some waste at the end. And usually since, since um, sometimes singles aren't like, sometimes my singles because of mistakes aren't super strong, I usually will use that method if there is some yarn um, remaining at the end. So I'll divide onto two bobbins, spin my two ply yarn, and then what, with whatever's left over, wind that into a center pull ball, and then turn that into two ply. But I'm not sure what I would do today because since each of the singles for this two ply yarn are different, um, the, if I were to just make a two ply yarn out of whatever is left over, it wouldn't match. Um, so I'm not in so that's why I might just end ply it just to show you guys how I do that. Um, oh, this is so fun. I love these twists and it's fun because sometimes there's twists within the strand and yeah, it's just so <laughs> exciting. Um, I just like watching the colors come together. Um, it's just so much fun. <laughs> so on my staycation, I did a lot of dyeing. Um, and I'll have some new, some new videos that um, when I'm all done with the spin along series, I'll start editing and um, get those video, those new dyeing videos out. But right now I am at the point where I, it, I always have to wait a couple days for the yarn to dry so I can share the finished color. And so the longest part in filming any of these dyeing videos is just waiting for the yarn to dry so I can film the conclusion. Um, so, you know, I do everything and it's like, hurry up and wait, wait for us to dry. And believe it or not, not all of these dying videos feature Wilton's Violet. <laughs> it's my favorite to play with, but I did, I, I did do something else and I did um, some comparisons and stuff. So I think that we'll, we'll find it fun. But I love it when you guys share, tag me on Instagram or send me pictures on Facebook and stuff of you guys dying. Um, I think that it's just, it's a lot of fun. And then you can make something and you know that like you, you designed it from like, you know, even if the, the patterns that you designed, like you decided like the colors that you wanted. And so it just gives you so much more control over what you're making by hand. And I think that that's pretty fun. Okay. And so my other hand keeps slipping off camera. It's really not doing anything except for, oops, and that. Oh well, it's really not doing anything except for just holding the yarn and I'm pulling as I pull up from the bobbins that are at my feet. It just kind of glides across the top to just hold it, hold it steady. Um, versus when, I mean, I guess it's similar. My, my right arm and hand usually do most of the work when I'm spinning, but I do do a bit more with my left when I'm drafting than when I'm flying. Do the bobbins stay on the Lazy Kate easily or do they want to pop off? They stay super easily. Um, they just kind of, let's see if I, yeah, they just kind of sit down there and um, yeah, I've never had one pop off or even try to pop off. Um, so I've been very, very happy with that. And I don't remember if I mentioned today that I'm spinning on a Kromsky Fantasia. Um, I don't have any affiliation with the, the company or anything like that. 
It's just really the wheel I picked because it was the first wheel I tried and it has a small footprint. Wasn't outrageously expensive, even though it was a gift. So I didn't pay for it. Um, I, yeah, I, I liked it and it's really easy for me to pop in a closet. Um, do my singles stick to your bobbins? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by stick. Um, they, I mean, they're coming off really easily. It kind of, um, at the, the very beginning I showed, like they, the bobbin spin on the Lazy Kate as easily as this spinning up here. Um, so, uh, and I guess the wood is smooth enough that I don't have any issues with the singles catching or sticking on to anything. Um, I'm not quite sure if that was, if that answers your question. So let me know if you want uh, me to clarify. So I guess sometimes when I'm plying, I might do a longer draft or at least lean back a little further. But it's not really a long draft because I'm still like keeping my fingers on it constantly. Um, I'm really excited to try. I think I'm finally going to try my much faster whirls and try to really go for some singles. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I like the sound of the treadling too. Um, although sometimes, so someone um, last time was like, oh, you have some yarn stuck on the wheel. Or maybe not last time, on one of the other videos. And I was like, no, that's because it got, the part was like a little wobbly. And it made the sound or it like bumped, and <laughs> it disrupted my feel <laughs> of the wheel. So... Yeah, but I love the sound. I love it enough that sometimes I'll just treadle with nothing on the wheel just because it's so soothing. They should make a noise machine with the sound of treadling a wheel as white noise. Oh, man, I would put my kids to sleep to that instead of, like, an ocean um, crashing. But, yeah, my... Oh, I was watching some video. I didn't watch a lot of it, but there's a video that popped across my feed today of someone who was spinning fiber from net stinging nettles and making something soft and usable out of it. But looking, I all I could think and like I didn't have the sound on, so I didn't hear much um, about it. But all I could think was, wow, his sing like his singles are so thin. I was so jealous. Um, <laughs> But not necessarily of the stinging nettles because I got poison ivy a couple weeks ago on my shoulders when I was picking up my son from school. And so, yeah, I'm now like feeling really hesitant around plants. And I'm, I've never spun plant fibers. I have, I think, as part of the fiber that was gifted to me, um, when I was first starting out spinning, I do believe I have some cotton fiber. So I'm curious to see how that spins up. But I think most of what I've, I have spun some alpaca and some unidentified dog fur that I was gifted. Banana silk is to die for in merino. But, so where is it coming, does banana silk, does the fiber come from the peels? Or does it come from somewhere else on the plant? I've never heard of that before. Um, I do have, speaking of rare fibers, um, I do have some pearl yarn where they took like pearls that were like had imperfections and so aren't ones that would have um, got a lot of money and they somehow created a synthetic fiber out of it and so it's this white lace weight 
I think I got the lace weight, not the fingering. Lace weight yarn that has this pearlescent shimmer to it. Oh, I'm so, I have it. I have a pattern in mind for it, but I got it after kids and I haven't had a lot of lace knitting time. Oh, the banana silk comes from the banana leaves. That, that makes a lot more sense than the, I mean, the, the peel of bananas is pretty fibrous, but um, the fruit are also like a commercial product. So I think that trying to use another part of the plant makes sense. Okay, so we'll see. I still have a reasonable amount left on the bobbins, but as you can see, this is starting to fill up. And so I'm, oh, well, actually, I'm not probably going to have to. I know I'm going to fill up the bobbin and have to go to a second one. I forgot about that when I was planning today because I'm applying 200 grams of fiber, not 100 like I normally would. Oh, so this is when, man, I should have ordered that jumbo, the jumbo bobbins and the jumbo orifice. Well, I had a chance. If I had rushed it, I could have had it by today. Um... Oh, it's going to pain me. Do I even have scissors? I have scissors somewhere. It's going to pain me to cut it. Oh, we'll see how much I can get onto this bobbin. And it's a good thing that I have some extra bobbins now. Because if I only had, uh, if I only still had three bobbins, I would, I guess I'd have to just stop, wind the, the first yarn onto the knitting, knitting naughty and then keep spinning. Ooh, I'm so glad I have extra bobbins though. I wanted to be able to work on, well, not that I usually have more than one spinning project going on at a time, but I think there was once something that I just really quickly needed to make something really bulky and I was working on some more complicated. I have a really awesome spinning encyclopedia that has so many ideas on different ways you can spin yarn. Um, and I did some kind of fun four ply once where I think I did two, I, I spun four S singles. Then I did two Z two ply yarns. And then I plied the two ply yarns to create this like really cool four ply where like, I mean, I guess I didn't do it perfectly, but it almost looked like links on a chain versus twists because of the way the two twists twisted together. Um, so there's pictures of that on, um, in a blog post on, my website is chemnitz.com. Um, and yeah, frequently, even stuff that I do in videos, sometimes I'll chat a little bit more about it on the blog. Um, although I don't think I'll have a lot of behind the scenes writing for this because since I'm live, you guys are getting all the behind the scenes, charger crunching. If I suddenly go dark, <laughs> we'll know why. <laughs> it's because I stepped on my charger. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, yeah, so this weekend, my kids and husband went out of town and left me behind. And so I went live and I did a little bit of spinning with you guys. I dyed some yarn and I also started working on a quilt for my eldest. Um, the first quilt I ever made, I did for the baby and I finished that when he was six months old. So I finished it. He's 19 months old today, so I finished it a little um, over a year ago. And um, my oldest sleeps with a bunch of his baby quilts that were made um, by one by my mom and one by my aunt. But unfortunately, he's growing, and so these baby size quilts are a little too small for him. And so I am working on making him a twin size one. And I had made so much progress. I cut all the pieces. I did the layout. And then I dropped my soda bottle. And the lid popped off and it exploded across the room. 
the the glass bottle was totally fine, but I had like soda from like I dropped it right by the couch and it went all the way to the wall on the other side of the room. So it was a bit of a a bit of a disastrous setback, but um, everything dried and I think I got everything put back together. I just haven't started sewing it yet. Uh, so yeah, that's what I worked on this weekend. But at one point, um, it was pretty late. I th think it was Friday night. I was looking at my wheel and I just, I really wanted to keep going. Um, but I real, but I wanted to save like this plying for another night, um, or another video. And I was like, oh, maybe I should spin something else. And I was like, ooh, it would feel like I was cheating. You know, since I'm in the middle of this live spin along, <laughs> if I were to turn it off, or if I was just going to start another project, yeah, it was, it was just a little funny thought process. Um, but I was also procrastinating working on the quilt. Um, so, oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I, oh, actually, huh. I might be able to fit a bunch of this on the bobbin. We'll see. I'm not that close to the end um, of the bobbins, but here, I'll show you. See, they're getting um, lower. So I'm definitely, definitely more than halfway done today. The, there's a couple second delay between, you know, what I'm filming and what I'm doing and why did that, okay. There's a couple second delay between what I'm doing and filming and, oh dear, what did I do? And what shows up live, so. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> when I'm trying to fix the camera, it takes me. A minute. Yes, there is a ton of space towards the back of the bobbin and I plan to take advantage of that. I'm slowly working my way back because sometimes if I get a spot that's too full, it's hard to get back in. Um, bobbin management is not my strength. <laughs> my uh, little tool bag but I have oh, I have yarn and tools stashed in so many places in my house especially with the kids when I have to quickly put um, stuff away yeah so the uptake is starting to get a bit harder so you see like it's not um, and that's because it's starting to um, catch I don't I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it all. Um, I think that it would just be too much effort. But man, it irks me to to cut to cut yarn. I mean, I know you buy yarn in multiple skeins and stuff all the time, but it's just I'm really I'm absolutely putting the jumbo flyer and bobbins on my wish list um, for this year. Yeah, very frequently. So my uh, husband and I make, you know, wish lists that we send to, like, our respective parents. And, like, we use and we edit each other's, like, I'll send his list to his parents and my parents. And I'll edit it down so that way if there's anything I happen to have gotten him already, they don't see it and vice versa. But um, starting around the, like, second half of the year, if there's anything knitting related that I want, I usually will just kind of wait and add it to my list because I have trouble coming up with ideas. Okay, I'm gonna move that over. Um, have you seen a Russian join? It seems, I have seen a Russian join and I actually have a video of a Russian join. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have um, two videos, a Russian join and a felted join. 
I actually kind of prefer the felted join to the Russian join. Um, because it's a tiny bit faster and I don't always have a needle. Yeah, you can hear um, the wheel is just starting to struggle um, with the with the uptake. There's getting a lot of friction. But, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be better at like saying the questions. The question was, have I seen a Russian join? It's seamless and you can add any yarn together. And so it's this technique of um, you kind of almost like wrap the pieces of yarn like one end around and then you like use a needle and you kind of insert it back into the previous loop. Okay, when I the way I've just described it doesn't make any sense. Um, check out whoop, check out the video on my channel. <laughs> and that should help. All right, I think I'm not ready to call it. Oh, but okay, but I am really proud that there have been no breaks in the yarn so far. Watch, there'll be a bunch of breaks after. Right after I cut it, okay, I think I'm gonna need to call this. Um, and yeah, cause I'm struggling to get the yarn through. Where are, I would think that I would have scissors in my work case, but scissors are, oh, and let me, I'm gonna leave this. I may as well leave it like that so you guys can see. Um, <laughs> You'd think that I have scissors in the work bag, but there's always such a need for scissors that they never stay in my knitting bag. Oh man. How much of the singles do I have left? Um, I'll show you in just a second. Um, Oh gosh, okay. Let's, um. You ready? Uh oh. I wonder how long ago the video recording stopped on the other camera. And let's. But, ooh, hello, pretty. Am I on camera? <laughs> Watch, I'm holding, yeah, I was holding it out of frame. But so this is what we've got so far. Um, yeah, I am in love. Like, the, the fibers are close enough. Like, they're just so complimentary. I mean, they were both filled with Wilton's Violet, so they should be complimentary. Um, but, I, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm going to put this pretty down there so uh, you guys can see her. Is Yarna her? Hmm. Never really thought about that. I refer to my wheel as a her. Um, okay, this is a ridiculously long leader. Um, I'm actually gonna trim it. I could, yeah, I maybe could have squeezed a little more, but I was really starting to struggle. And, okay, maybe I should have done it, but let me show you how much, how much is left. Um, so, ugh, I'm not gonna get that many yards on the next bobbin, am I? Um, Cause the one on the left uh, <laughs> is almost out. Um, ugh, I could have pushed a little more. Uh, maybe I should have, but <sighs> hindsight, it looked like there was a, whoa, there was a bit more from 
where I was sitting. Okay. Let's get this little time lapse going. The angle from that camera today is a little wonky. Ooh. I do not need them. Why are you squeaking? Okay, that's better. Okay, just getting the twist started. Uh, it's done, forge ahead. I know, cutting, cutting is so, so hard for me. I need to slow down. So you can see just like the difference. So I don't need to have as much tension on the brake band because the bobbin is low. And so um, the yarn is getting picked up faster, which means that uh, it's just way, way easier to spin. Aw, I'm glad that um, I've, I'm spinning early enough net today that it's evening in Europe versus middle of the night. Um, yes, I am wearing a Stegosaurus skirt. Um, I got it at Mod Cloth. I am a huge dinosaur fan. Um, my... Uh, favorite movie and probably favorite book of all time are Jurassic Park. Um, <laughs> and um, I'm still working through all the, pro sharing all the projects that I did for my second's first birthday party, which was dinosaur themed. And he has a dinosaur themed bedroom. And, you know, got to pass on that love. <gasps> Land Before Time, absolutely. This, that was the first movie I ever saw in theaters. My aunt took me and my cousin. I must have been visiting in California. Um, I love that movie. But my eldest really likes dinosaurs, but I haven't shown him Land Before Time yet because I think that it might frighten him a bit. Bambi didn't bother him, but uh, you don't see the hunters in Bambi and you see Sharp Tooth. Um, but we like Dinosaur Train. Um, it's a PBS show that <laughs> combines trains with dinosaurs, but they talk about like everything with us, like a, you know, look and observe. And so now my, well, when he was two and a half, my almost four year old would, would go around saying, I have a hypothesis. And that was pretty cute. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, yeah, my, my eldest knows, you know, dozens of species of dinosaurs. Um, and so now do I, but I haven't learned a bunch of names of trucks, which they would probably also both of them gobble up just as easily, but it's way easier when I have an interest in something to, um, to do it with them. But. Yeah, I like I made a really fun I crocheted a really fun like dinosaur. It was almost it was a hat, but it was also kind of a cape because it had this piece and so the spines kind of went down the back um, of the baby. And so I made that for to take some newborn pictures of my youngest. So that was pretty fun. Yeah, it is. Thanks. Um, the, the yarn is really soft. Um, so I like the one of the reasons why I like plying is because if it's you spin the, your singles a little bit tight, they loosen up a bit um, like with the ply and it helps get some like of the soft spring back to it. Uh, but we still have a a reasonable 
amount on the bobbins. But one of the things that's kind of fun um, is, so at the end of my spinning project, I will, I wrap the yarn onto a nitty knotty. Um, and then I always count the wraps because I'm curious about the yardage. And so it's just amazing to think about how many times that yarn has passed through my fingers. Um, and so if you have, you know, 400 yards, well, and it's two ply, well, that's 1,200 yards that you've done with just that yarn. Um, so a question, would you recommend this wheel for a, beginning, for a beginner spinner? Absolutely. I'd recommend trying it out first if you could, um, but I don't think it's necessary to stop, start on a drop spindle or anything like that. Um, I found, find this wheel really easy to use. Um, it was really easy for me to build and set up on my own using the paper instructions. And I think I maybe needed to watch a video for one small part of it, but it's like really easy to use. It's really easy to snap um, the bobbins in and out. And I have been really happy with it. Um, you can, so it come, this is the whirl that it comes with, um, which I think the speeds are, the ratios are like maybe eight to one and five to one. I'm not entirely sure with that. So I'm using a faster whirl that I purchased as an addition to the wheel. And so I'm spinning on, I think 10 to one right now and it has 14. There's even a smaller one that I have as well. And so the ability, I think, to switch out those whirls so you get different um, ratios. And what these ratios do is each time there's one revolution on the wheel, um, the flyer will spin 10. So since I'm at 10 to 1, the flyer will spin 10 times versus one um, revolution of the wheel. And the ability to so easily change that means that I, you know, you could spin many different weights of yarn with one wheel. Um, so I've been very happy with it. I haven't really thought and looked about getting anything else um, with, you know, some other tools and like, ooh, maybe I should upgrade this or upgrade that. And um, so yeah, I would absolutely recommend it. This is the first wheel that I owned, the first wheel that I ever tried. Um, I think that even though I, I don't think I'm necessarily like, I don't have the skill to be a spin teacher. I think that if like you came over to my house, then I would be able to get you like spinning on the wheel, like really, really fast. Um, so yeah, I, I like it. Um, oh, all right, we are approaching, approaching the end. So I don't know if I could have fit all that on the first bobbin. Um, potentially, but maybe not. Um, all right, come on. Oh, I'm getting too much twist. Maybe I'll just do this manually. I got a clip. The other one. Um, okay, come on. Why aren't you taking this up? Did I go to? There we go. Oh boy. Do I even have another? I don't think I actually have another bobbin down here. Oh wait, no, I do. Ha! Okay. I emptied a bobbin. Of course I have another bobbin down here. I bought a fishing tool to measure how deep you fish. Oh, you've bought a fishing tool to measure how deep you fish to measure how many meters you have. Oh, so you like, you, as you're spinning the yarn, it'll measure. That is pretty cool. A tool that can, that would make sense because you would want to know how much line that you have left. So you could like, Feed the, so you feed the yarn through this tool and then that'll measure it for you. That's pretty cool. Um, I mean, I just count, but so this, let's show, this is how much of the two ply we got. 
Aha, I am. <laughs> All right, I've got to stand up. I can't. Since I'm not on selfie mode, there we go. The two ply yarn. And let me show you how much is left. So the one that ran out first was the, um, the speckled roving. And so this is all that's left of the other one. So ultimately, I think it was pretty even. Um, but I think I might just quickly... And ply this. They make a beautiful beret for fall and winter. Ooh. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if I'm gonna have enough um, for a hat. That would be pretty nice. Um, okay, so I'm gonna quickly. Oh, you use. The fishing tool, when you ply the yarn, I see it to, to measure how much, um, how much you've got. That's pretty cool. All right, so this time, because I find it gives me an easier start, I just tied a knot at the end. Um, and, whoa, that is too... I know, I gotta get, since this is one I did for singles, I gotta get twist through. I'm getting this started as always. Okay, because it's wanting to twist. Okay. Come on. There we go. Um, there we go. Alright, I don't know. I'll stop in a second so that way I can see if you can see both my hands. Oh, I'm spinning way too fast. Let me. Aha, uh -huh. that is coming off. Okay, so I keep a loop around my hand and then I just keep picking up the yarn through that. And I'm way over twisting it because I'm trying to keep my hands on camera. Um, hold on. <laughs> Let me help. Wow. This is not going like I wanted it to. All right. <laughs> um, let's increase uptake. Come on, let me get this shorter. <laughs> Sorry guys. This is what I get for doing an impromptu. Can you see both of my hands? My break band is on. I just like, I'm trying to spin closer than I normally do. There we go. Um, and so I just don't know if you can see my second hand to see how I'm, because with this requires a bit more of my attention. Um, okay, let's see, maybe I'll scooch back and hope that we can still see everything. Um, okay, I think maybe now, um, you should be able to see what I'm doing with my hands as I, no, the break, the break band was on. I was just, I got excited and then started, come on, going too fast. Um, ah, hey, look, someone asked about my bobbin kicking up. It did just then. But so I'm chain plying or Navajo plying right now. Um, and yeah, that's the end because I'm out of, um, because my bobbin's now empty, which is why it was kicking up. So that is just like a couple yards of very unhappy <laughs> spinning. Not my best demonstration, but 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Um, so let me come in and show you guys. So it's kind of a pseudo, I mean, it's chain plied, but it looks and is, has like the feel of a three ply. Um, maybe sometime I'll do that again. I'm not confident enough with my technique to film like a tutorial or something, but yeah, that's just a glimpse of what I do and how I do it. Um, and I thought that it would just be fun to use up the rest of the yarn like that. So, all right, let me, checking on the babies real quick. And they are both still asleep, which means that we have um, some more time. I wonder, move the, the wheel out of the way, and maybe if I sit back here, if I can get myself on camera. I'm just going to um, come back to selfie mode. Um, you know that you're a mother when you go by the sleep of your children and not the time. Yeah, I've gone very dark. Um, I think that like the, the non-selfie cam because the windows are so bright. Um, oh, yeah, I'll stay, I'll stay close. Okay, so this is my Nitty Naughty. Oh, sorry for the squeaks, but it is a PVC pipe um, that we cut and we got some fittings to turn into a nitty knotty. Um, and I love it because I can store it flat um, and I can replace the center bar to make um, skeins that are a bunch of different sizes. As it is, this is a foot long, so I would make a four foot um, skein, which fits very nicely on most swifts um, but you can you know increase this I could decrease it to make mini skeins um, I could change the size of all the different fittings and it cost me like you know six bucks or something to to make all the pieces I think I my husband did cut them but I think you get two free cuts from home improvement stores so it was a bunch of half inch, um, two foot long, just PVC pipe. And, oh, sorry about that squeak. And so, yeah, you've got a nice little nitty knotty that I can use to wrap up um, the yarns. And, there yeah, and so then after I've finished the yarn, I like to set the twist with water. So I wind, um, the yarn around the knitty knotty and then I'll use like a sprayer from the bathtub and kind of just spray it down with warm water and let it dry and then when I come off it's just like fluffy and pretty pretty yarn. Um, so I'm gonna pop the the big bobbin back down onto the lazy cape and I'm a little <laughs> lazy when I start um, because I don't like when things slip around, so I always just kind of uh, use a little bit of tape. It helps me find the end as well. And now, hopefully it does okay, if I do that it goes too dark. I really need to stay in the frame. And then I can wrap Put this one the wrong way. There we go. And then I can wrap the yarn onto my nitty knotty. So I know you guys can't necessarily see, but the, the point of the loop is it goes around one end and twice. So the, the length of the skein would be two feet long, but the 
total length around each revolution is four feet. Um, but I do have some videos on the channel of me doing this a little more zoomed out, but each time I zoom out, because I've got the light at my back, it um, gets pretty dark. But then, yeah, so this, and this would actually be a reasonable time to use one of those fishing measures, or I know they have um, yarn yardage tools as well, I guess, that you can feed the yarn through. So I could have a tool measure it while I am wrapping it around the nitty knotty. Um, but yeah, and then so then when I at the when I'm done, I just literally count the number of loops and multiply that by four. And that's how many feet I have. So that's where my yardage comes from. <laughs> my uh, not very scientific. Uh, yeah, but do you guys have any questions or, or anything as I do this? I'll pop on um in a couple days to just kind of do some conclusions because it'll depend on how long it takes for this to dry um and then i'll have to do the second mini skein i really should just make i think it's time for me to make myself a second nitty naughty um it's cheap enough and i think the wooden ones um I was having trouble finding, the reason why I made my own was that I was having trouble finding one. Um, Cause Knit Picks didn't have any yet and I don't think I knew about the Woolery yet. And so I just didn't know really like how they were spelled or what they were called. And I just knew that it was a tool that I needed. And so um, I forget where I saw it, but I was like, oh, we can go and buy some pipe and my husband helped like at work he cut um, he cut the pipes down for me and yeah it's super handy and then I can just pop when I'm ready to remove the skein I can just pop off one of these I can just pop off one of these ends and it'll come straight off. Um, so it is super, super handy. It's not as pretty as the wooden ones, but. Oof, and this is when my arm starts to get tired and up. Oh, we finished it. And again, just because I like to keep everything taut. Um, I just use a little tape and I fold one end down so I can pick it back up, but yeah, we are wound onto the nitty naughty and you can just see these twists. Yeah, the I, I think that was a, the fact that it is um, PVC pipe versus would mean, yeah, you're right, that it, I can soak it um, on the Nitty Naughty versus, I think other people will use weights, and so they'll wet them and then they'll attach a weight to one end to kind of pull it down, but I can just soak it and, well, I kind of leave it like, because I don't really want to leave the end like soaking, so I kind of like uh, balance it a bit in like over a sink or the tub or something, but yeah, that is really fun. Um, I'm sure that they are all over Etsy. Um, yeah, but it, you know, I think most people have access, you know, people don't always have access to a lot of local, local fibers and stuff, but almost everyone has access to a home improvement store. So, um, I believe that you can get, um, I don't know how, how much cuts are, but I think that 
they would make cuts for you. And I do have a list of what all the different pieces are called um, with the proper names, um, both on Chemnitz and um, should be in the video on this channel. Um, forget. Yeah, so this is, so this is the, the two-ply yarn that we did. This is the, the chain-plied yarn that remained from one of, um, one of the skeins. And I still have a little more, um, which I could, sometimes if I only have a mini skein left, I'll wind like a short skein, like just, you know, from one end to another so that way I can take care of it at once. But I think I will take the time to wind this properly. Um, and because I'm curious, uh, two, four, six, So I've got about 90 wraps. Um, and so, um, <laughs> okay. And since I'm not going to try and embarrass myself and do this in my head. Uh, all right. So I've got about 120 yards right here on this skein. And um, I'm sure that, you know, I definitely have more here. So this, I'll have to look and see like what, and I, I still have to check the WPI of it. Um, actually, I can do, I think I do this one a little tighter, but I have a feeling that it's worsted or uh, heavy worsted maybe. Um, hopefully I started this in Okay, so I, I was not quite doing this properly. You're supposed to like twist it and I was wrapping it. Um, but it's about, uh, yeah, so I got, I got about 10 wraps. So it's a worsted weight yarn, um, which I'm very pleased with. I like using that. It's very versatile and useful for many projects. Um, I'd love to get more yardage um, <laughs> out of um, my yarn. So it'd be nice to do something thinner and Man, if I could end up with a two-ply fingering weight yarn, I would be really excited because then, like, I'm in some nice, like, lace territory. Uh, if I get some time to start knitting lace again. And, oh, I lost my comments. Um, my Woody Naughty is nice to look at, but I can't take it apart so it doesn't store well. Yeah, I, I think the fact that I can store this flat or even take it apart in pieces is great because, you know, again, something else I didn't realize would be super useful when I started off. But yeah, I am really excited that we've made, that you guys have hung out with me while I've made these yarns. Um, I'm, you know, it'll take a few days, I'll set the twist and I probably won't do it at a scheduled point, but at some point before the end of the week, I'll pop back on for just some brief conclusions to the spin along. Um, if I have a sense of when I'll do it, I'll try to share that in advance. But if you can't catch me live, you can always catch the replay. Um, and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me while I do this. And yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, I had some technical, um, well, not technical, like technical fiber technical difficulties today. But I think that I ended up with some really pretty fiber in the end. So I am happy. And make sure you check out my other videos. Um, you can dye fiber just like the ones that I spun. Yay. 
<laughs> yeah. So thank you so much for watching. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you find out when I'm live. Um, also check out my website, www.chemnitz.com. And I hope to see you guys soon. And oh, I can start working on the time lapse video um, that I filmed while I was doing this. So then we can watch the bobbins fill up. Hopefully, um, <laughs> hopefully they're in focus. It's hard when I'm not behind the camera <laughs> when I'm in front of it. But anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Bye.